And we're admitting all. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm so scared. <laughs> welcome. Oh, Is it time to say welcome? Oh, yes, Anthony. welcome? Is it time to say welcome? I don't know. It's always time. Go. Yeah, I, got, I, say, I say welcome. Oh, uh, welcome. Welcome to the premiere episode of the world famous, the prematurely world famous viral radio theater. I have the great privilege of presenting a wondrous cast who I can't remember um, each of their, each, each and every one who's here because I don't have a list in front of me, but I will pass it, that, that great uh, privilege off to my um, wonderful uh, narrator of the forthcoming play, uh, Brooke Steinhauser. Would you please share the cast of this um, marvelous production Me? we have in store for you? Yes. Well, we got Hannah. We got Elise. <laughs> <laughs> we got <laughs> Eileen. <laughs> we got Milo. We got Robin. We got Kristen. Adam. Marley. <laughs> Sarah. Kelly. Hey, look, it's Anthony. Oh. <laughs> and I think that's it. Excellent. All right. Well, let Anthony in, um, I suppose, if we must. And uh, we just ask um, all well, of our attendees. on the screen. Oh, uh, we, we just ask all of our, our, our wonderful audience members to put their uh, Zooms on mute. And, which, uh, and, and which is in the bottom left corner. Yes. Uh, uh, put your zooms on mute and and uh, disable the video uh, factor because um, um, as this is radio. As as nice as your faces are. <laughs> yes, we'd love to see you all. Um, I got to turn the volume up just a hair. One, if you can't hear. Um, That's good. The. Uh, uh, the charming couple uh, we, we, with, with the blue and purple shirt. Um, it, if it's possible for you to... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> They're doing what we do. They're working on it. They're, All right, excellent. Um, very good. Very good. Let me, uh, that would be my aunt and uncle. So let, me, uh, <laughs> let me see what I can do to help you guys. <laughs> what are we doing wrong? You're not doing anything wrong. You're, 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 you're this is, this is. We're not uh, supposed to talk, I think. <laughs> do you, um, uh, let's see. Do you see at the bottom of your, um, screen, Aunt Janice? Oh, I gotcha. Hang on. I'm going to mute you. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So with no further ado, I would like to present the Viral Radio Theaters first production of Suspense, Dead Earnest. And now Autolite and its 60,000 dealers and service stations present. Suspense. <gasps> Tonight, Autolite brings you Dead Earnest, one of the most famous of suspense plays, originally produced and directed by Anton M. Leiter, but pr produced and directed by Mr. Adam Irish on this occasion. Boom, ba -dum, bum, bum. Friends, officially spring has sprung, and you'll want a spring pep for your winter weary car. That means when you replace old gap spark plugs with wide gap Autolite resistor spark plugs, your car will idle smoother, give you better performance on leaner gas mixtures. Save gas dollars. Yes, you actually can tell the difference in your car. Autolite regular type spark plugs have long been standard factory equipment on many landing leading makes of cars and trucks. And now six, that's right, six of these leading makers of trucks and cars and cars and trucks have switched to Autolite resistor type spark plugs for factory installation on their new 1949 models. These new Autolite resistor spark plugs are the spark plugs of today and the future. Remember, you're right with Autolite. And now, Autolite brings you a tale, well calculated to keep you in suspense. Accident report. To Police Inspector Blandon from Lieutenant S. Healy, Place 15th Street and 4th Avenue. Time, 2.45 p.m., March 11th. Remarks. 
Ernest Bowers, age 34, was crossing the intersection as the signal light changed from green to red. A car driven by a Theodore Toby made a legal right turn from 15th Street into 4th Avenue. He hit him! He hit him! What a mess! Oh, all right now stand back come on let's have a look is he hurt bad i didn't see him honest i didn't i have the right of way yeah he's passed out hey what do you people call the ambulance yeah you there hey move back move back here he's bleeding i'll prop up his head yeah here use his jacket i'll hold him golly he's limp he feels just like he's dead Yes. Ernest Bowers felt like he was dead. Ernest Bowers suffered from catalepsy, a strange disease. He carried at all times a note in his inside jacket pocket stating that he was a cataleptic. And in the event of seeming death, his wife should immediately be notified, or his doctor, in the event that his wife was unavailable. The letter also requested that no autopsy or embalming should be performed on his body for 72 hours, although in his particular case, the duration of the attacks was usually four hours or less. Ernest Bowers also wore a sterling silver bracelet with an inscription reading, Do not embalm me! I am not dead! Catalepsy is a disease of the nerves and mind. The physical conditions of the cataleptic when he is under a spell closely resemble death in all aspects, including the primary stages of a rigor mortis. Officer Abbott was on the scene of the accident. He administered aid to the injured man before making out his report. Bleeding. I could just cut in his forehead when he hit the ground. Nothing much. Now, uh, what's your name? Toby, Theodore Toby, here's my license. Hey, 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 you kids. What did those kids do? They picked something up off the street. Huh? Oh, here, here it comes. I hope he's all right. Oh, he doesn't look like he's breathing. Oh, what a shame. Oh, I told you to get back. Get back. Come on, I'm glad you're here, Doc. He's out cold. Uh, yeah, 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 let's get him awake. He's dead? Well, anyway, it didn't happen in our wagon. Okay, well, take him away. Keep him back, officer, will you? Yeah, keep him back. Clear out of here. Come on, the show's over. It's the third one today. There, yeah, let's go. Hey, 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 who, whose coat was that he was laying on? I don't know. Did you pick it up? No. Hey, officer, where's the coat? What? Huh? Oh, gosh, it's gone. Okay. Yeah, never mind. Let's go, Frank. <laughs> Ernest Bowers had lost the identification of his condition. The letter was in the inside pocket of his jacket. The silver chain he wore on his left wrist had snapped and fallen to the pavement. Two youngsters pick up the chain. Robert Manelli, age nine and one half. Tommy Stoner, age eight. Well, pull around the back of the shack. Boy, it sure is a nice chain. Well, hey, there's writing on it. It's the guy's name. Huh? Nothing. Nothing. Just... What's it say? Wait a second. We'll be out of the alley. What's it say? <clears throat> Wait a second, will you? It says... What are we going to do with it? Sell it, Dopey. Stuff. Yeah, but when we try to sell it, they're going to ask us where we got it. What do you tell them? Nothing. Use your head. Know what we'll do? What? Your pop told us not to we'll use, use his welding torch. Is he here? Well, no. There it is. Yeah, put it up on the
on that grid. Okay. Yeah. Be careful. Hey, what are you kids doing? Well, uh, hello, Pop. Hello, Mr. Minnelli. We didn't do nothing. Nothing, huh? I thought I told you kids not to go near that torch. Well, we want to melt this down. Give me that. What is this all about? We found this chain, Papa, and we want to melt it down and sell it. Whose is it? We don't know, do we, Tommy? No, no, we don't. There's nothing wrong, Pop. We just found it. It's us. Do not, uh, uh, do not embellish me. I am not dead. What's that? It's screwy. Where'd you find it? In the street. Honest, Pop. It's nothing. Come on, get out of here. How about melting it down, Pop? We could sell it and buy some baseballs. Mm. All right, keep back. I don't know if Killian's here, but... They melted it down and took it to a gold and silver dealer. They sold the metal obtained for a dollar thirty. One dollar and thirty cents. But the coat, the coat was the principal thing. In the coat, in the inside pocket was the letter. The information about Ernest Bauer's condition was in that letter and the instructions could save his life. The coat was picked up from the street by Honest Jerry Murdoch. There's a big sign near the corner of 15th Street. It says, Honest Jerry Murdoch Swap Shop. He brought the coat into his store, rummaged around on the shelves till he found some cleaning fluid and started to clean the blood stains. I'm looking for a sports jacket. Just a moment. What kind? Conservative. Oh, okay. Would you come over here, please? Yeah, something on that order. Uh, pick out what you want. How much you want to spend? About five bucks. These cost more. How much? Well, from eight to twelve. <laughs> they don't look so hot for eight bucks. From eight to twelve. Say, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm just putting a new one out in stock over here. Over here by the counter. Yeah, that looks all right. What size is it? Oh, I don't know. Here, try it on. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, it feels all right. Kind of stiff in uh, XX, you know? Uh, that's because it's almost new. You'll break it in. Feels like cardboard or something. Uh, you want it? Five dollars. Mm, okay. Uh, there might be a couple of stains on it. I didn't have time to take out. Uh, use some cleaner on it. I'll, I'll bring it to the tailors. It'll be better than new. Yeah, here's the five. Ernest Bowers was brought to the receiving room at Bennett General Hospital. Various routine tests were made. The time, 4.10 p.m. If Mr. Bowers were going to awaken, it would probably be 6.45. Dr. Weldon made his report. He wrote it down while he was standing by the telephone switchboard. Yes! This is Bennett General Hospital. Is there anyone by the name of Bowers at home? Bowers, B-O-W-E-R-S. No, nobody home. Is Mr. Bowers married? <laughs> I hope so. If he ain't, he's been living in sin. <laughs> Where can I reach her? There's been an accident. I don't know. She's out. Will you tell her to call the Bennett General Hospital? Yeah, all right. What happened? Mr. Bowers is dead. Can't reach her, huh? No. Well, I'd like to do an autopsy. Yeah, what'll I tell the wife when she calls? Well, if it's pretty soon, I'll talk to her. We still have those tests to go through. Then, I'm off. If it's more than an hour, he'll probably be on his way to the morgue. At that moment, then 4.22 in the afternoon, at that moment, if anyone had been in receiving room B at Bennett General Hospital when the, where the body of Ernest Bowers lay on the patient carriage, they would have seen a fly crawl slowly across the face of the dead man, and they would have seen his nose twitch. Oh. 
For suspense, Auto Light is bringing you radio's outstanding theater of thrills, suspense. Oh, it is the first day of spring, and I've got a cold in my head. <laughs> well, Hap, you should get outdoors. You need a change. Yeah. <laughs> The way a car with those worn out plugs needs wide gap Autolite resistor spark plugs. I don't, I don't. For your no. winter weary car, replace those old narrow gap spark plugs with Autolite resistor spark plugs. Your car idles smoother, gives better performance on leaner gas mixtures, actually saves gas dollars. And what's more, Autolite wide gap resistor spark plugs also cut down interference with radio and television reception. But I gotta get rid of this cold. <laughs> We should all get rid of winter ills. Get rid of old narrow gap spark plugs. Everybody should install a set of wide gap autolite resistor spark plugs. Everybody can cure somebody else's cold. <laughs> ah ha ha, but only Autolite offers smart car and truck owners everywhere the sensational advantages of resistor type spark plugs. They're ignition engineered to meet the highest standards of automotive engineers. Remember, folks, you're always right with Autolite. <laughs> And now, Autolite brings you back to our soundstage, Dead Earnest, a tale well calculated to keep you in. Suspense. He accident report continues. Henry Prince had within his power the opportunity to save the life of Ernest Bowers. He had purchased the coat in which was the letter which could save him. When he left the second-hand store, he stopped to chat with some friends, made some purchases at the grocery store, and started home. The time? A few minutes after five. He lived about two blocks from the scene of the accident. His wife was waiting for him. Well, how do you like it for five bucks? Yeah, 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 it looks all right. What's that, a spot? Where? I'm gonna take it off for a second. I wonder what it is. He said there were a couple spots. Cleaner will take them out. You know, it looks like... What's this here in the pocket? No, I don't know. To whom it may concern. Please open and read. That's what must have felt stiff. This note is carried on my person wherever I go. It is to advise responsible parties that I am a cataleptic. And if it appears that I am dead, I am not. What's that? And my body is not to be molested for a period of 72 hours, neither by autopsy or embalming, although the maximum period of my attacks usually do not exceed four hours. Please telephone my wife, Mrs. Margaret Bowers at Fulton 733. This is a boarding house. Address 841 and half West 25th Street. If she's not there, please try Axminster 4322. This is the number of Dr. Benton. Of vital importance, this may mean my life. <gasps> Thank you, Ernest Bowers. <laughs> That's a funny one. Where'd you get the coat, honey? Honest Jerry Murdoch's. I wonder what we should do. Nothing. Probably been forgotten already. Somebody sold him that code and forgot to take the letter out. Doesn't sound like something somebody would forget. No, oh, the devil with it. it. Might be important. Look, Henry, look at those spots. Might be blood. Nah, it's too dark. That's the color blood turns. I'm going to telephone that number. Go ahead. I think you're wasting your time. Hello? I'd like to talk to Mrs. Uh, Bowers. She ain't in. Well, how do you know? You didn't even call her. I know. She went out. And you ain't the first to call her. Well, who else wanted to get in touch with her? Oh, somebody. I don't know who. Oh, well, thank you. See, I told you, you're wasting your time. I have the strangest feeling, Henry. Must be a terrible position to be in now. Everyone thinking you're dead when you ain't. You're helpless about it. Well, go ahead, go ahead. I can see you're not gonna win this one either. Oh, it's busy. How about some dinner? Oh, it's cooking. I just can't get it out of my head. That guy, whoever he is, he's just lying that people think he's dead when he ain't. They'll be doing things to him, like embalming. They do that at the morgue, preparing the body for burial. They, I think they take the blood out of his veins. Oh! Couldn't kill him no debtor. Henry, I'm gonna find out about that coat. Where's this place you bought it? Now wait a minute, Francis. I put in a good day's work and I'm tired. I don't want to go running around the city. I don't even know about... I'm gonna do myself. How about me at home here while you go out? I want to eat. I'm hungry. 
but then I won't be ready for another 15 minutes anyway. Now, where is this place? All right, I'll go with you. He ain't here, locked up. What's that sign say, 10 minutes? Yeah, guys put up those signs if they're gonna go away for an hour. Wait a few minutes. Come on, Francis. Wait here, I'm, I'm going to the cigar store and make a call. When you make up your mind, nothing can change it, unless it's an invitation to a poker game. Ah, uh, very, very funny. Look, you wait here. Hello? Is Mrs. Bowers in? No! Mr. Bowers? No, he's dead. He is? That's what they tell me. Oh, well, 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 wait, a, wait a minute. Oh, darn it. Hello? I just spoke to you. Will you, will you will You're you bothering me, lady. I got a meal set up on the table, and I can't be answering a million questions. But all I want to know is, when did Mr. Bowers die? Well, how should I know? Ask Mrs. Bowers. She'll be home soon. Thanks. Darn, that doctor's line's busy. Well? But no luck, same as before. Mr. Bowers is dead. I found that out. See, I told you. What about the letter then? What if he ain't dead? What if they only think he's dead? Well, what do you want to do? Wait here all night? No, no, but we ought to wait a little while. Maybe we can find out where he lives. We're going to go traipsing around the whole city? If I have to. Well, then what of me then? Well, do as you please, Henry. I'll be home. If you think of more crazy letter than finding your husband, then that's all. What do you mean, that's all? That's what I said, that's all. So the trouble with you is, you don't have no imagination. No, I'm just a home-loving guy, that's all. I don't go sticking my nose where it don't belong. Well, go on home then, you love it so much. I'll find out about it. Ah, uh, women. A different turn of speech. Another question. If the boarding house woman were more cooperative, if she knew the facts of the case and took an interest in the death of Ernest Bowers, if, 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 at the hospital, meanwhile, events were pursuing their normal course. Can't reach anybody, eh? No, doctor. I tried a few minutes ago. That boarding house woman snapped my head off. Well, we're finished with these tests. Sure wish we could do that autopsy. Maybe later after he's gone to the morgue. Want me to try again? Hmm? Oh, no, no, no. Get me the orderly room. Okay. Use that one there. Hello? Pain? Yeah. Yeah, this is, this is Dr. Walden. There's a delivery for you. Go to the morgue. Now? Yeah! Ugh, I ain't had nothing to eat since... Yeah, 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 since lunch. Go on now, Payne. Down to the Stephen room. The papers are there, too. Ugh, why can't I wait a few minutes? It's gotta go now. They want to start embalming so they can go home. Uh, how about sending one of the other boys? Oh, I don't care. Just as long as he gets there. Okay. Want me to keep trying to reach his house? Nah, the rush is off. Any time now, going to the morgue. Tell you what, you can wait till his wife calls here. She should be home pretty soon, I guess. I'll be here all evening. I want to talk to her. All right, doctor. And uh, don't get your wires crossed. Oh, dear. Oh, de oh, oh, Mr. Murdoch. Yeah? Oh, I'm so glad you came back. Uh, come in. What can I do for you? Well, you sold my husband a jacket, a sports jacket, this afternoon. Did I? What kind? A light blue one. Had a few stains on it? Uh, sorry, I can't take back nothing once it's sold. No, 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 no. I don't want to give it back. Where'd you get it, Mr. Murdoch? I don't even know which one you're talking about. I got lots. 
It must have been a few hours ago. Blue within red boxes? Oh, that one. What about it? Where'd you get it? What do you want to know for? There was a letter in it, an important letter. I don't know. How can I remember where I got it? Long ago? Was it long ago? I don't see where it's any of your business where I got it. Oh, it may be important. I've been trying to reach the numbers, but the doctor's number's always busy and the wife, she's not home. I just one thing after another. I don't know what you're talking about. Now, please, I'm busy. I got lots to do here. You gotta tell me. Look, just tell me one thing. Did you have the jacket here a long time? Well, I don't know if... Please, it's very important. Well, no, no. I just got it this afternoon. Oh, oh, where'd you get it? You said just one question. You asked it, and I answered it. That's all. There was blood on it. That I can't help. Now, will you excuse me? Look, 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 you must tell me. I don't have to tell nobody nothing. Look, I may be all wrong. I'm probably just crazy about this, but if that man's alive and they do anything to him, I'll never be able to get over it. I'll never be able to live with myself. The whole thing sounds crazy to me. The letter on the inside of that jacket, it said that Ernest Bowers was a cataleptic. What's that? He goes into fits or something? No, 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 no. A cataleptic. You know, someone who looks like he's dead at times, but he isn't. He goes into a spell. He looks like he's dead, but sometimes, you know, they take dead bodies to the morgue and they embalm them. That means they take all the blood out of their veins. This fellow Bauer, he's a cataleptic. I don't know if he's dead or alive, or even if he's worrying about this letter, but I've got to find out. Well, there was a... Um, what? Uh, what? An accident before. Yeah. Who was in it? I don't know. Believe me. Hey, lady, I didn't know anything about all of this. Do you think this guy was taken away in an ambulance because of one of those uh, cata cataleptics? That coat, was it his? Yeah, lady, yeah, but it was left here on the street. They went away and left it. Who, who did? The ambulance. What ambulance? I don't know. The cop was there on the corner. He told someone to call an ambulance, and they came and took the man away. A cop. A cop. I saw a cop outside while I was waiting for you. Is it the same cop? Yeah. Hey, look. Hey, hey, lady, look. You gotta protect me. I ain't done nothing wrong. I didn't know anything like this would happen. I never would have taken the coat if... Officer! Officer! Hey, lady! Ernest Bowers lay on a slab in the morgue. If he were alive, probabilities were that he would regain consciousness before 6.45 p.m., and the two embalmers on duty at the time had decided to get a bite to eat. When the phone rang, Anthony answered. Well, we were going out to eat. Yeah, I know another one just came in. We got it here. Well, what's the rush? No, no, we just wanted to get a cup of coffee and then we'll get on. Look, is it our fault if one comes in just as we want to get a cup? What's that? We get to go home after. Well, yeah, that puts a different complexion on it. Okay, yeah. What time is it, Al? Uh, 6.30. Doc says if we embalm this one now, we can go home. Oh, well, let's start in then. I'm hungry. Okay. I'll start the motor. A young guy, ain't he? Yeah, I was speaking to the wife about that yesterday. Yeah, here, looks like we can get in through the neck. Get the uh, Give me a piece of that gauze. Yeah. I says to her, she ought to be around this place more. We get them all ages. Yeah. Hey, hey, look at him. You get the injector in, okay? Yeah. You'd never think that such a little thing like his heart stops beating could make him dead and not alive. Hold it steady, will you? Yeah. Ready? Just a second. Okay. All right. Here we go. Oh. What's the matter? Oh, my glasses, they're clouding up. Well, take them off. Nah, nah, I'll just clean them. 
What'd the wife say to that? Huh, what, about all ages, you mean? Yeah. Well, she didn't have nothing to say, except that most of the guys we deal with probably come to a violent end. Yeah, well, there's something in that. All right, got him clean. Here we go. What's the matter? They've steamed up again every time I bend over. Uh, I wonder. What? I wonder if... Oh, it must be my imagination. What? I could have sworn this guy was breathing on my glasses. Well, is he? Well, how could he? Well, come on then, let's go. It's quarter to seven already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll get the phone. Now, nah, let's get this started first. Okay, we'll just... Ow! Oh, what's the matter with you? I... 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 I thought I just saw this guy's hand twitch. Oh, don't be stupid. Got me scared. Let's, let's wait a second. I'll get the phone. It'll probably be another job, and then we'll never get out of here. Let, let it ring. But the doc said we could go home after if... All right. All right. Come on, come on. Let's get this thing over with, Al. Okay, give me the knife again. I will. Tony. Hey, Tony. Yeah? Look, look at here. I'm bent over like this. I ain't gonna move. And my glasses are full of steam again. Holy! Is he alive? Oh, look at me. Look at me. I'm shaking all over. Look at him now. Look at his lips. Oh, Listen. shut off that motor. Apparently, the life of Ernest Bowers was worth one dollar and thirty cents in a silver bracelet to the boys who ran away with it. And five dollars for a bloodstained jacket to honest Jerry Murdoch. Their petty thefts brought a man to the brink of death. And there's just one more episode, which I suppose doesn't belong in an accident report, but I'd like to include. After regaining full consciousness, Ernest Bowers put in a telephone call from the morgue. Hello? M Mrs. Brawley? Is Mrs. Bowers in? I don't know. I'll see. Josie! See if Mrs. Bowers is home! Who is it? Well, this is Mr. Bowers. Who? Mr. Bowers? Well, they told me you were dead. The hospital called and said that you were dead. <laughs> I, I know, Mrs. Brawley, but, but they, they made a mistake. Oh. Oh, here she is. Hello, Ernest. Where are you? Well, darling, it's, it's quite a long story. You, you see... Oh, never mind. You get right home, you hear? Dinner's getting ice cold like a cadaver. <laughs> Thank you for a great suspense show. <laughs> I'm still got this cold in my head, Harlow. <laughs> well, Hap, why don't you swap it in for something useful? <laughs> I'd, I'd like to. Well, you know what else is useful? The way folks are swapping in winter chills for springtime thrills by replacing old narrow-gap spark plugs with wide-gap Autolite resistor spark plugs. Autolite resistor spark plugs are made by Autolite men who make over 400 products for cars, trucks, airplanes, and boats in 28 Autolite plants from coast to coast. And Autolite also makes complete electrical systems for every makes of American's finest cars, batteries, spark plugs, generators, starting motors, coils, distributors, all ignition engineered to fit together perfectly, work together perfectly because they're a perfect team. <laughs> Gotta like you and me. So folks, don't accept electrical parts that are supposed to be as good. Ask for and insist on Autolite, the original factory part at your neighborhood service station, car dealer, garage, or repair shop. Remember, you're always right with Autolite. <laughs> <laughs> Night's suspense play was written by Sally Lester and Mervyn Gerard and acted out by these fine people around me here. <laughs> Thank you, Adam. You have been listening to Suspense, performed by the Viral Radio Theater. Thank you for listening. Yay! 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 Gary, Steinhauser's on. Mute. <laughs> <laughs> and Larry Steinhauser. <laughs>
Bravo! We love you all. Thank you. Bye. Thank you Thanks for tolerating for us. <laughs> Are you kidding? It's the highlight of the week. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> your week in our performance. <laughs> Tune in again. Yes, we'll, we'll have another episode. At some <laughs> no, no, I think um, we can permanently <laughs> muted. <laughs> you should, you should be unmuted, Aunt Janice. <laughs> Are you sure? I, mean, yeah. I don't know. I don't see this is, this is selective muting and unmuting. Yeah. I, I don't know. I can hear you, Janice. Brooke has a lot of power right now. <laughs> Only her family I members. Why we're not, you might have gotten broken power, actually. <laughs> uh, <laughs> everybody. Oh, that's a good idea. That would have helped, actually. Not one of those. <laughs> yeah. so we should all have a cocktail in hand. Why that's didn't you? What's wrong with you all? I know. I know. I'm it's nine not... and a half years old. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only eight, and that is not going to stop yeah, me. Yeah, but you're a very bad boy. So. <laughs> it's screwy. <laughs> I was almost involved. <laughs> uh, corpse survivor. I don't know why. Oh, there you Anthony, go. You're gonna share that corpse survivor somehow? number two. There's not much left. Oh well, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I have to be involved. Yeah. Uh, uh, so what? So we know what the next one's gonna be, right, Eileen? What is the next no. one? No. Oh no. Honestly, I don't think I want to do it. I've been looking, um, and I'm not up to. I've never directed anything, and I don't. I don't really want to. Well, we were talking about doing sh uh, an episode from Shadow, right? Yes, but I couldn't find a <laughs> script anyway on this site or anywhere else. I used to have right. a book, but I don't know where the book is. No, so we'll let's, let's decide this offline, guys. Yes, let's. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Really Thank, you. Fun, Thank you all Bye. for joining Bye. us. Bye. This was a lot of fun. Yes. Bye, Autolite so, Spark Plugs. <laughs> <laughs> bye, bye 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 hey stay well <laughs> nice job brooke <laughs> thanks mom <laughs> <laughs>